Welcome to the Sam Livecast. It's a Thursday night, which is really our Friday night. Because we don't broadcast live on Fridays, though we do uh, repeat a show. And if you haven't seen all of them, get yourself in front of a computer and watch. Though you can go to the SamLiveCast.com and watch all the old episodes. You can't go to iTunes. You can go to, uh, where else? Somebody tell me. YouTube. 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 And watch this, this yeah. stuff. I was going to say watch the shit. I didn't mean shit. Well, I did mean shit, but I mean it in a very positive way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's many uses to that. Uh, kind of like the shit at fixtures. <laughs> kind of like the shit at fixtures. Living, exactly. You guys go to the samlivecast.com, click on recipes, and check oh, out everything. Oh, look at that the Asian got. Chinese barbecued ribs from last night. Holy crap. Unreal. So good. God, weren't they good? So They were good. really good. So good. Uh, and the recipe's right there if you want to watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. I feel like we've got a lot to do tonight. We've got Greg Rempe here from Barbecue Central Radio Show. In about 15 minutes, we'll talk to him. Mm-hmm. He'll make us... Hold on. Never mind. Oh, the air conditioning. Yes, I can hear my father yelling, <laughs> I'm not paying to cool down the outside. Or in winter, we're not paying to heat the outside. Do you have any idea how much I have to yell at Jordan for the air conditioning? Well, There's as nothing... way of explanation, Max uh, oh, yeah. lives with his brother Jordan. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with putting the air conditioning on. No. There's a problem with repeatedly putting the air conditioning on and leaving the windows wide open. Well, that's bad. Every time. Grandpa wouldn't Jordan. be happy with him. Hey. Uh, hey, where can people connect with us? Facebook. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash Sam the Cooking Guy. Mm-hmm. Go to my Facebook page, and you can communicate with other live casters or us. Kelly, Mrs. Sam the Cooking Guy, who's sitting right there with one of her hats. She always wears hats. Mm. <laughs> she has hats on all the time. There she is. I do. With a big dog ass right beside her. <laughs> She's uh, right now responding to people on Facebook. Is that what you're doing? Well, yes. What are you doing? What is, why, why do you say it like that? It's the first Connect time I've been all. in Facebook today, so I'm like oh. in a panic and I'm trying no, to. Like you know, no, up. you're doing. <laughs> she had a long day at work. What you're doing is you're looking at your own personal Facebook. Yeah. Well, don't do that. Okay. You don't she, have a job right. here. Here I am, people. Facebook.com slash Sam the Cooking Guy. Look at Button wrote, I do that in my car, eek. Here I am. What? What? <laughs> I, she does what in her car? I have no idea, <laughs> Button. What do you do? <laughs> I do that. Maybe, maybe what do we, we want to know. Talk, uh, all right. About? Just, not. Uh, just let me talk about We Olive for a second. You go to weolive.com. They only carry California certified uh, olive oils. Extra virgin. Only the best. New sponsor of the show. We adore them. You can go to weolive.com. Hit shop in the top uh, right-hand corner. Right there. Shop now. When you get to the promo code, put in my name, Sam. I'll spell it for you, S-A-M. I, I was only kidding about that. <laughs> but you'll get 10% off anything that they have. They're amazing. And uh, we are making connections as we speak. Uh, we're going to have a uh, cool chef on uh, in, within the next two weeks. Right, Lynn? Yeah. We won't yeah. say who he is yet. You can say who he is. You want me to say who he is? Say who he is. Chef Keegan Gerhardt from the Food Network Challenge. Chef Keegan and uh, Gerhard from the Food Network Challenge, you know, Let's because he's the guy. Get a picture. He's the guy. You'll know when you see him if you watch yeah. any of those challenge shows. There's that whole uh, challenge series on the Food Network. He's coming on to chat about Food Network, who he can't stand. <laughs> now, behind the scenes. Now, we'll try it behind the scenes stuff, but there he is. Yeah. He's got those, uh, those I, would, I would say, German or Canadian looking glasses. He is the German. I would say German. He is a German. He is a very oh, he is. German but you know what? look to him. The, every time I go to Canada, I'm, I'm blown away at how sort of uber hip people are in their eyewear. Anyway, you the mean chef... The, Ke- the Canadian goobers are uber hip? Yes, the Canadian goobers. <laughs> okay. You. We were just you there. You came from two socks Canadians. And, socks and sandals. No, they don't do that. that were the, those were the German tourists. Look, uh, Chef Keegan's going to come on anyway. Chef Keegan has a new restaurant in San Diego called uh, D-Bar. D-Bar. And uh, he is, we're hooking him up with the people at We Olive because he has, a, he has particular tastes in olive oils. Mm-hmm. And he knows, as we know, they can fulfill his needs happily. You know what anyway. he wants to do with it? Sorry? He wants to make an olive oil ice cream. Of Been course he d- does. Already done, by all, already done by We Olive. They've yeah. got the most unreal uh, extra virgin anyway, olive oil ice cream. Anyway, you go weolive.com, click shop, buy stuff, promo code SAM, 10% off, and they have a 995 one price shipping, no matter how much you buy. So buy more. Yeah, I think you want to change that to nine ninety nine because that's what it says here. Oh, nine ninety nine. 
They yeah. should change it to 995 because I'm saying it. <laughs> it's like when I'm in another city and I go to an ATM machine and it says there's a fee to take money out, mm -hmm. yeah. I always get lots. Yeah, of course. Because I, I don't want that 250 charge to be on a $20 I know, but then bill. you're walking around a foreign country with all this cash. So your logic is if they drop their shipping by $0.04, cents, it would no, increase No, it would just be easier for me to remember 995 That's <laughs> okay. what it is. Um, I'm holding this empty jar of Jif in my hand. Mm -hmm. I was at a uh, grocery outlet a week or so ago buying some stuff to be on Fox 5 here in San Diego. That was the morning I said shit on the air. Didn't mean to. My apologies. I'd love to see that clip. And grocery outlets, um, they're an extreme grocer, which means they buy opportunistically which means when you go in, they'll always have peanut butter. It may not always be Jif or Skippy. So the day that I went in, they had Jif on a whatever crazy price. I bought the Jif because I needed it for Channel 5 that morning. Didn't eat it, didn't touch it, brought it home, put it in my cover. So it's empty now. It's been like a week and a half. It's the best peanut butter I've ever had. <laughs> I'm not being paid to say that. I'm just telling you. The difference between this and the Skippy that we normally buy, Kel, mm -hmm. get Jif from now on, please. Oh. Oh, it's, I'm telling you. Super it's that, chunk? That choosy mother's, this is extra crunchy. The choosy mother th thing is right. Choosy mothers are buying Jif because it's freaking awesome. <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks that? Well, there goes our hopes. Of, of, of ever like, having Skippy. Yeah, as a, Skippy as our sponsor. <laughs> I like I said. I'm sorry. It's really good. I know. I've been, so like I've recently been buying that natural peanut butter um, from like the health food store, yeah. and like I was kind of amazed at how different it is. Yeah, that stuff. Let me ask you a question: sweet. Will they sweet. sell you the natural peanut butters at the health food store if you're not wearing Birkenstocks? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Will they? Of course, do. They want your money. Mm -hmm. I went into Whole Foods for something <laughs> the other day. Everybody that works at the cashiers mm -hmm. there, <laughs> tattooed or pierced somewhere. Everybody. I think you have to be inked up or have holes in your body to work at Whole Foods. I think those Whole Foods stores actually have um, like um, good benefits and good pay. Oh, no, I think they do. They have I know great. at Trader Joe's they've got. Right. Yeah. But by the way, your dog is howling upstairs, Max. <laughs> I can hear him. I'm so glad he's trained now. <clears throat> He'll stop. He'll okay, so let me, uh, let me ask you a question. We're going to just play a little game for a second here. I'm going to say a name. I want you to tell me who this is. Calvin Cortazar Broadus Jr. Does anybody know who that is? No. Calvin Cortazar Broadus Jr. I don't even know how to spell that. Gonna Perhaps you would know him do. by his other name, <laughs> Snoop Doggy Dog. What? No. Didn't he just change his name? Wait. So he went from... So Calvin went from Calvin to Snoop Doggy Dog to Snoop Dog, right? Mm -hmm. He dropped the doggy. Then everybody just knew him as Snoop. Snoop. He has now changed it again. He now will be known as Snoop... <laughs> Snoop Lion. <laughs> So silly. Because he went on a trip to Jamaica and he had a Rastafarian experience at a temple. And you know what that means? Yes. <laughs> Lots of weed. Yes. And and the, the the head of the temple said, No, I don't see you like that. You're not Snoop Dogg. You're Snoop Lion. And he's dropped the hip hop music. Really? And now he's he's got a reggae album coming out. But it got me thinking about people that have changed their names like that. So uh -huh. we'll play a little game. I'm going to say a name and you tell me who they are. And these are people we, sh we probably would know if you gave these. These are name. names that you would probably know. Okay. So I'll start with a couple easy ones. Carlos Erwin Estevez. I know that one. Who is that? That is Chuck Sheen. Chuck? <laughs> you did not just say Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Did you say Chuck? Yeah. Okay, you're right. Charlie Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> You had a first Sorry. name casual basis with yeah, him? That's my buddy. Uh, this is, I think this is Norma Jean Mortensen. I don't know that one. No idea. I'll put us all up and we can all just guess. I'll, I'll give you a hint. I have really no idea. Norma. Well, goodbye, Norma Jean. That was I think we're too young for that. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, I was like, that was it's Marilyn Monroe. Oh. 
The uh, Elton John song. I'm just kidding. Candle um, in the Wind is about Marilyn Monroe. Really? It is. I didn't know that. I didn't know the that. Candle either. burned out long before. Everybody at home can participate as well. Okay, ready for this one? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Reginald Kenneth Dwight. <laughs> you won't know what? that. Reginald Dwight, huh? Reginald Dwight. What's that one? Boy, RGD. Reginald Dwight. That's actually Elton John. Oh. What? Okay, how about this one? Listen to this name and see if you can get it. Stephen Victor Tellarico. Stephen Victor Tellarico. <laughs> I don't know. Tupac Shakur. Stephen Tyler. I have no idea. Say it again. Say it again. Stephen Victor Tellarico. Wait, his real name's... Wow. Yeah, Tellarico. Now, I understand that maybe that's not a good stage name for a rocker. I yeah. can see why people would change their names. Yeah. So Liv Tyler should have been Liv Tolarico. <laughs> Tolarico, right. Look, we got some answers coming in from yeah, home. I know. like it. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Okay, how about this one? Ready? Mm -hmm. Lawrence Harvey Zeger. <laughs> Lawrence Harvey Zeger. <laughs> There's no way to know. Yeah. Larry King. What? <sighs> yes. Jeez. Every time someone has like a nice TV name, I'm just going to assume they have like, I, I, I oh, assume it's they all have some like shit that. name, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tonight on Lawrence Harvey Ziegler, <laughs> we talked to President Obama. Uh, Joaquin Rafael Bottom. <laughs> Is that Joaquin Which, Phoenix? Yes. Is that Joaquin Phoenix? <laughs> Which, by the way, I'd be changing it even if I wasn't an actor to get rid of Bottom as my last name. Bottom Phoenix. Do you have any idea? He probably changed it in fourth grade. You imagine the abuse that that poor guy took? Oh, yeah. Uh, Nicholas Kim Coppola. Nicholas Cage. Nice. Listen to this one. I don't know how to say this. This is funny because I'm going to forget this. Uh, Jennifer <laughs> Anastasakis. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Jennifer Anastasakis. No Aniston. Yes. Oh. You see <laughs> how this great. works? I like she's the way Greek? I like it when they she's keep Greek? That's so weird. I didn't think she was a Greek. Copa, probably. Greek. Anastasakis she's to me is, is clearly she's too fair Greek. To be Greek. No. She's it's too... not not necessary that you have dark hair to well, be Greek. Well, obviously not necessary, Greek. but Greeks. They mm -hmm. drink ouzo, they like feta, they like olives, they like it in the no, almost, never mind. Whoa. The, oh I didn't God. say anything. That is your line. That I don't is, know where is, you've told me that before, but you've said that line to me multiple times. Just say it. What do you think Greek sex is meant to be? Oh, God. Just say <laughs> it. Just say it. In the ass. <laughs> what? That's what, what do you think that expression is? I've no? I've never heard that. I've never heard you say that. This is that. a show. Sometimes yes, without cooking. You say it all the time. <laughs> Who are well, perhaps you? I have a different relationship no. conversationally with my son. He looks I do and he goes. Wife, he goes. You know what the Greek do? <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. I got only have a couple more. Uh, that was your birds and the bees talk. Thomas. <laughs> right. Thomas Maypathor the fourth. Thomas. Thomas Maypathor the fourth. Tommy. Keep going. You're doing well. I'm trying to, th yeah. Tommy Lee Jones. <coughs> Cruz. Cruz. Oh. Tom Cruise. Okay, check this one out. What? Sherilyn. How do you... No wonder. If you can't read it off a piece of paper, you have to change it. Sherilyn Sarkeesian LaPierre. Uh, you got me, man. Cher. Yeah. Oh. She kept a little bit. She kept four letters. <laughs> Okay, these ones you'll know. Cassius Clay. Muhammad Ali. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I don't know which one to give you here first. His slave name, as you said. Ron Artest. What's his oh. real name? Oh, Metal uh, World Metal Peace. World Peace. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lou Cinder. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yeah. Yes. Chad Johnson. Chad, oh, <laughs> wait, it's back to Chad Johnson. It is. Chad Johnson <laughs> became you Chad got me Och again. Ocho Cinco. Yeah. yeah. You know, he just became Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco. Wait. Then he, he just got married, and his wife didn't want a stupid last name. <laughs> he's yes. back to Chad Johnson. Yeah, he's God, back to Chad Johnson. That's that funny. That's so huh? embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, who's the man there? She is, as we all know. <laughs> the wives are the ones. Yeah, who's the man in your relationship? <laughs> she is. right. She's right there. Look at her, and she knows it. <laughs> Wait, okay, I want to just show you, I want to show you a picture. <laughs> that was like your Richard Nixon mom. <laughs> I know. Okay, hold I on. Thank you. It. I felt like that. <laughs> 
Uh, wait, let me just ask you what this is. Then we're going to get to uh, Greg Grumpy. Okay. Do you know what this... Do you know what... Hold on. Do I know what... Do you know what this is? <clears throat> this picture? Yes. Do you want me to pull it up? You have to pull okay. it up. Sorry. <laughs> I thought that would be obvious. Any idea what that is? That looks like a cake. Like a, a weird, huge cake. That is a brick of butter. It's a 600 Jeez. kilogram... A piece of cheese. Oh. <laughs> I got it. That was carved. Good job, Kel. That was carved into this what? crown to commemorate the Queen's, was it 48th? Jubilee. The Jubilee. 40th Jubilee or 45th? 48th? 48th? Uh, I, think it, I think the Jubilee is at 50. Well, it was, it was carved into a crown to commemorate the Queen's Jubilee. And to beat the world's record, she had to... She had to make the, the cheese sculpture beyond 290 kilograms. That is now 500 kilograms. Well, she set the bar high. She set the bar very Jeez. high. Look at that. That's so they a just, freaking piece of cheese, dude. So, so they just like make a huge block of... Like, she spent like two weeks in a refrigerated cooler <laughs> carving that bitch. Let me ask you. Yeah. Do you think like maybe for the first day or so she's had like a big tub of crackers next to her <laughs> every time she's carving she and every little piece every little piece wait i've got her words here someplace and every little piece that she cut off she would put with some crackers yeah mm -hmm. uh cordon blue trained chef tan is pulling pose with the crown she carved from a block of cheddar cheese she's currently awaiting verification from the guinness book it's the world's biggest cheese sculpture it's the fucking world's biggest cheese sculpture <laughs> here's what she said i'm elated but it was very daunting <laughs> Can you imagine being given a massive round cheese and told you have to go into a fridge on one of the hottest days of the year to carve it? I was given a 600 kilogram block of cheese. I spent eight days carving the crown and did 12 hour sessions, which did get a bit chilly in the fridge. Jeez. She didn't wear a jacket. <laughs> She's complaining about going into the fridge on the hottest day of the year. Yeah. I don't think she has Just to go outside and warm up when you, when you take a break. All right, but here's what we need to do next. It's grilling week, and there's no better way to end grilling week than talking to our grilling barbecuing expert, Greg Rempe, from the Barbecue Central radio show. We're ringing him right now. Oh, we're calling. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It's still ringing. I got, I got ahead of me. You did a little bit, but it's okay. Uh, Radioshow.com. You can go there. He does a live uh, thing like this. He would call it a podcast or something. We call this a live cast. Tuesday nights. Uh, 9 p.m. in his part of the world, which is barbecue part of the world, <laughs> which is like way back there, which is 6 o'clock on the West Coast. You are in... on the line with Mr. Greg Rempe. So Greg Rempe. Yo. There he is. What's up, brother? I, I would... Man, where do I start? First of all, I don't know if Cleveland would be considered any type of barbecue anywhere in regards to the country. Second of all, I like Uzo. Right. I like feta and I like anal. <laughs> and, and, uh, and what are we saying in society, even as, as a world view, when you have a 600 kilo chunk of cheese to be cut up in the form of like a, uh, a, a head dressing or whatever the hell it was? Couldn't that have been given to the starving children of China or Ethiopia know, or whatever? I know. I know. Look, 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 there's, you, can always, you can always make those arguments. Oh um, my! It's yes. just such. But a, here's the thing, and and yes, look, I I I rationalize this in my own head by saying, there's a lot going on for people in those sad situations. But yeah. you have to have a little fun. You, you can't turn everything into a charity goodwill pro project, or life will. I mean, maybe for them will be better, but <laughs> I mean. Okay, so I hope that a big piece of cheese is the going cheese to some country that needs it. That's One thing right. I have That's never right. been confused with is Mother Teresa. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, now you make me feel fucking guilty because I want to talk about barbecuing and grilling and shit. And, I do, and too. Come what on, are you man. Talking about? Come on, let's do this. We should be talking. See, in your logic, we should be talking about raising money. Uh, we, that cheese should go over a big, fat burger. Who are we kidding? <laughs> the world's biggest burger. Right. Damn, right. I know the guy that made the world's biggest burger. Oh. You do? He's Canadian. Ted Reader. Do you know him? No. Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of cookbooks out, and it was either last summer or the summer before, 
It ended up being like 500 pounds, and, and they ate it. It was well, huge. That would be the appropriate piece of cheese to go on that. <laughs> yeah, damn totally. Thing. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about it. Here we have a few things to talk about. Yeah. It's uh, grilling week here on the live cast, so you are going to cover a couple things. Just let me tease the last thing you're going to talk about. All right. The most awesome bitchin' ass way to cook a steak you've ever seen in your life, brand new that you just found out. Brand spanking new and like a baby. I just want to say, I just heard about one the other day, and I'd be interested to know if it's the same. We're going to so be able to compare notes. We'll save that for a second. But first, we're going to start off with just a few tips. Uh, grilling is, is what 90% of people do in their backyard every weekend. I do it a lot of times during the week myself, but right. I'm just kind of a kook. So, you know, some basic tips. Uh, one would be grill maintenance. Right. If oh, wow. All, if we're all being honest with each other. Yeah. When was the last time you really broke down the grill you took out the burners, you cleaned out the cobwebs, you took all that grease out of that bottom of the firebox of, uh, of your cooker to make sure that it's not catching on fire, that doesn't have like two years ago chicken fat in it. And that, that goes for people that have a little hibachi or people that yes. have a $3,000 big ass whatever. It, if, you, if you're using it as much as me, I would actually recommend doing it maybe even twice a year. But definitely once a year, typically I'm doing it in the spring and then again in the fall, uh, taking all the grill grates out, taking the, the grease deflectors off, uh, uninstalling the burners, going through the burners with like a bristle, uh, a brass brush. That's and making a good sure idea. That they're all That's a good idea. And then you have those little things that are called the venturis, which introduce the, the air and the gas together, make sure it's got that right combination for that nice uh, blue flame at the bottom, yellow flame on top. Uh, make sure it's all unclogged. And the, I mean, spiders get in. You hear about it all the time, but spiders get in there and they jam up the whole works. If you don't have that right air mixture into your gas grill, it's going to really kind of screw your whole cooking process up. Do it once or twice. I mean, Greg, I was at a guy's house one day and we were going to use his grill. Well, the idea was to grill. He was going to grill something. And he admitted that when he took the cover off and opened the grill earlier that day to get it ready... A mouse ran out of it. Oh, <laughs> that's disgusting, man. So, but needless to say, we didn't we didn't do that. Okay, go next. All right. So, clean the grill first, and then after you do that, you know, basic stuff. Um, every time you're going to grill, do a preheat. So, turn the burners on as hot as they're going to go. That's what I tell Let people. Get, you know, do it for 10, 15 minutes. And then take a nice grill brush, which is kind of a second part. Make sure that you have a nice, good grill brush. Stay away from the stuff that would uh, look to have the bristles glued in oh, because oh. that's when you hear about the July 4th, um, uh, the Center for Protective Grilling or whatever. where The people uh, getting it, like it little uh, brass bits stuck in their throat yes. at the emergency the room. Yes, the bristles oh. will fall out. Yeah. Uh, the, it gets yeah. on their meat. They consume it. Look, I still have a hard time believing with every fiber of me that somebody, to me, that smacks of somebody deciding to also clean their grill while they're cooking. <laughs> um, so what I recommend is that you do the preheat and then you take a good grill brush. I actually went to, I, I changed out of my por porcelain coated cast iron grates that really need a, a more softer bristle, like a, a brass brush. Right. And went to stainless steel. And then I went to the restaurant supply store, which we talked about when yes. we were on my show last time, restaurant supply stores, and got a broiler brush. And it's huge. It's, it's bushy on one end, and then it's got the long tines. So you can get in between and then on top. I've had it for two years. It was like 25 bucks. Best thing I've ever gotten. I think that's a good. Just let me add one thing to that. I would say uh, you see little short handle ones, right? And you yes. see long handle ones. Yep. Length is better because you want to oh. turn your grill on. Whatever you have, however it's set up, get it screaming hot, close the lid, let a lot of the stuff burn off naturally, then you come in with the brush. And if you've got a short handle brush, you can only get a couple of strokes in before you have to take your hand away, right? Yeah, it's going to burn your hand. It's going to so burn your hand. So get a long, a long handle one. Okay, right. good. Next. Or, so go ahead and clean that off. Yep. And now you're ready to rock. Go ahead and make your temperature adjustments uh, with your dials if, if that's what you're using gas grill. And then uh, put your meat on. Um, th there's a guy widely recognized in the, in the, bar in the grilling community, Stephen Reichland. He's got a number of uh, yes, cookbooks. A yep. lot of people have heard of him. He's right on the cusp of transition. 
Uh, it's into that Bobby Flay world. He he also recommends like oiling your grill grates. Yes. I mean, if it's clean to me, I'm 50-50. I might do it. I might not. But if they're clean, I don't really concern myself with things sticking. Um, so then you go ahead and cook whatever you're cooking. Mm. And then at the mm. end, this is key in my opinion. You do a burn off. So oh. let's say you cooked 50 cheeseburgers on your gas grill. Right. You have right. remnant stuff that is just collected there. Turn them back up to high. Shut the lid back down. Put a timer on for eight minutes. And then let it all recook off. It carbonizes. And then don't open it back up and go at it with a, br a grill brush at that point. Let it cool all the way back down. And then go ahead and rip it off with the grill brush. Grill maintenance. Uh, you know, a healthy grill or a clean grill is a healthy grill. Okay, I'll say this. I, ha I, I differ with you. In, in the, uh, the afterburner part of it. Here's what I say. I agree with you that you have to burn off what you've just cooked onto your grill. We did yeah. these great Asian uh, Chinese ribs last night. Oh. Of course, there was a sweet, sticky sauce all over the, all over the uh, grate. I got to get it off. Yep. Back in the day, when I used my gas grill, I would take the food off, I would crank it to high, I would shut the lid to burn everything off. Yep. And the next morning when I went outside, it would be burned off and I'd have no gas left because I would have left it on for three hours. Hence the timer portion. I understand it. that. So what I say now <laughs> is take the food off, shut the grill, turn it off. The next time you use it, you have to heat it up really, really well. Crank the shit to high. Leave the lid down an extra five minutes. It's going to burn off then anyways. I feel like you're doing two things at the same time. I, I Killing two birds with one stone. The Chinese version of that is e shu er now. Two birds, one stone. That, that was... I, I see exactly yeah. where you're coming from. I've been known to be a little OCD. Yeah. And quite honestly... Hence the timer. People are going to be honest and commit that way of doing it that you're saying to themselves, mm. they're going to be cooking over crap and... You know, the, the worst thing that you can possibly do is leave stuff from the last time, especially if you're cooking something delicate or that takes on flavors very well. Ah. And not, I mean, you've screwed whatever it is that you're going to Let's say we agree, we agree to disagree. <laughs> we, we agree more than we disagree. Okay. I want to hear, right. hear about um, the best way you've ever, the, the, the newest way you've heard to uh, cook a steak. Wait, let we're going to do this. the we're going to do the coal the charcoal thing another time. Let's talk steak for a minute. Was it steak? Yeah, this was a new steak method. Okay. And And who doesn't want a new steak method? Everybody wants a new steak method. Right. What you've heard of for years and years. Now, if you have a sous vide machine which I saw you use in a previous episode. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, you're, which you're I don't I don't currently have, but yes, we use one. Okay, so three, four, or five hundred bucks or whatever it is to get one of those. Yeah. Is it worth it? Depends on how much you're going to use it. The greatest thing about it, as you showed in your show, is that you can get the, temp the temperature of the meat to one setting, 125 degrees or 130 right. degrees. And then you put on a blasting hot grill. You do the sear on the outside. You get Minute the aside, and you're done. Yeah. But right. it's bumper to bumper from top to bottom, exactly the color that you want, which is hard for everybody to do otherwise. Right. So I was talking to a guy named Michael McDearman Tuesday. He travels around the country for a Sam's Club KCBS tour events, and right. he does the high heat portion of it. And there's another guy that does the, the barbecue. So we were talking about steak and meat and blah, blah, blah. And he said he, first of all, encourages people, recommends to people, to take, and this will make Kelly very happy because we talk about how you leave the steak out for an hour. She gets all yeah, squinted, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> He says, take, season it, put it back in the refrigerator, and then preheat your grill to 325 degrees. Not very hot. Not very hot. Maybe 350, but not more than that. Right. And then take your seasoned steak out of the refrigerator, put it on the grill. Hmm. Don't move it. Five to seven minutes, flip it over. Cold steak. Cold steak. Now, I asked him, I said, this is going against the very fibers of everything we've ever learned about when it comes to grilling. You want, you know, hot, you want the searing, blah, blah, blah. Room temperature piece of meat. Correct. Because you're going to get that even color, you know, the, the warmer it is because you're not fighting against cold and heat trying to get in the center of the meat. Right. Let me interject for one second. Yes. 
as I said the words, room temperature piece of meat, my wife laughed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Whose isn't? I, you know what? I'm, I'm married to a, a middle school girl. Um, actually, I think it's more uh, like an 11-year-old boy. God, you're <laughs> unbelievable. I was waiting for the that's what she said comment. Yeah, I know. Okay, so keep going. Keep going. All right. Now, the reasoning behind doing the, the steak from uh, the refrigerator right to the cooker, leaving right. it out for five to seven minutes, you're going to be able to retain about 10% more moisture than if you would do it any other way. Come on. What? Yes. So. What? This, this is what has been proven out. So it's so, not what I had heard. So you're still with five, seven minutes, first side, second side, still probably a little less, right? So now it has nothing to do with time. You're flipping it over. Yes. You're pulling yeah. out that goddamn new Thermapen. Love that it. I told you Love to get. It. Thank you. It's fucking awesome. You <laughs> and then you're cooking to internal temperature. So if you like medium rare steak, you're going to be at, you know, what, 140 degrees. If you like it more or less, you're going to be cooking it more or less. But you're, it's, you're done with time. At that point, once you flip it over, you're going to whatever that internal temperature that you want. And okay. of course, yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it one of these days. I, Look, I, I can't. I was the biggest non-believer of it when he was saying it to the point where I had to cook steak the next day. And you did it? And I did, and it was phenomenal. Come on. It was great. Okay. I, it goes against everything that you want to believe in and everything that anybody of any type of stature has told you about or that you've ever done. Okay, here's what I hear. Here's, here's the steak cooking method that I just heard of. All right, go My ahead. nephew told me this. You know those chimney things? Fire starter chimneys. Chimney. Got to Chim get one of those. Grillers with charcoal. Get one. I don't, I don't, don't have one. Don't use that lighter fluid for Christ's sake. No, I'm not using, using lighter fluid. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah, I know exactly what so you're talking So you take one of those. You stuff newspaper in the bottom. You put... Yep. Uh, uh, br either briquettes or lump charcoal on top. I would do lump for this. That's what I use lump only. Yep. You light the bottom. You let it get screaming hot. And at yep. the point where it's screaming hot, then you would dump that into your, your Weber, your kettle, whatever you're using, right? Sure. This guy, my nephew, Troy, gets it screaming hot. He sets it in his Weber. Then he puts a grate on top of it. On you see what I'm chimney. saying? On top of the, the chimney thing, right? Yeah. Yep. And then the steak right on top of that. Oh. Yep. That's it. He cooks it right there. It's that like is, this far away from the heat as opposed to this far. Dude, that is huge heat. Huge heat. And he huge admits heat. you get that crispy, dark bark on the outside. Mm. Yeah. But perfect inside. And maybe yep. you need the thermopen for it. I, I did know. see a similar, same thing that you're talking about, but it was done with um, sushi grade tuna. Oh, oh. oh. yeah, really? Yeah. So you want to get that quick sear on the outside, but still leave it, you know, nice and uh, raw or medium rare. No, that's pretty it. interesting. But, Everybody, but, everybody's posting that that's Alton Brown's method. Yeah, which is Alton Brown's the, the one you're you're talking the about. The chimney Troy's. thing wasn't that interesting? Yes. There, there must be a lot of centralites in the crowd tonight calling that out. Wow. Kooks. That's you guys are kooks. <laughs> he is kooks. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're the man. How's the radio show going? Well, whenever I get visits from Sam, the cooking guy, they're mm. fabulous. Yeah, thank you very much. Because we can, you know, here's what I like. I like to be able to get outside. I can talk about the same thing week in, week out, whatever. You like to get outside the box a little bit and... The last time you were in, we talked about just stuff you want to have in your kitchen. Yeah, yeah, it was a good, that was a good conversation. Kitchen. Yeah, I mean, you know, some people like it, some people don't. I don't give an F because it's my show and I like it. Yeah. And yeah. look, if you really break it down, <laughs> you don't cook outside all the time. So you got to have the right tools in your home kitchen when you're cooking inside. Wait, are you telling me that people didn't here. like me? Is that what you're saying? Because that's what <laughs> I just heard, like, dude, and I, I don't want to hear do that. Do you know how many emails I get <laughs> when I do shows that are just barbecue and grilling telling me that I suck oh. and that I need to do this to my show to make it better? Well, wait a minute, even... Greg. You okay. got a shout-out from uh, Livecasters. Don says hi. Tell Greg Don says hi. Don G. Yes. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> you got fans. You got fans all over the place. <laughs> all right. Uh, Greg Rempe, Barbecue Central Radio Show, Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. in that barbecue part of the Cle country. Cleveland, Cleveland Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, that's right. 6 o'clock our time. 
Yep. Thanks, man. You're a, you're a, you're a, a great guy to have on the show and becoming a good friend, though we've never actually met in person. One of these days we will. I told somebody to enter your contest, so keep an eye out. Okay, You're good. Not, not oh, we'll Kilo. talk about that. We'll talk about how many people have entered so far. It'll be good. All right, thanks, All right. man. I appreciate you being here with us tonight. All right, guys. Thank you for Thank helping you. us uh, end our grilling week. Yeah. It's my pleasure. All Have right. a good one. See you, brother. Out. There he goes, Greg Rempe. Ladies and gentlemen, he's awesome. Awesome convo. All right, I got I to gotta start these trout because if I don't, I'm never going to get to them. Yes. Um, and Kelly's not happy that I've got whole uncooked fish sitting over there right behind me. They're yeah. not. It's not going to smell good very soon. Get no, it's going to smell good. Gonna be, no, oh, I'm God. saying if you get them cooking. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Okay, stop it. The Sam Livecast cooking competition. Deadline is August 13th. Eight people in teams of two at a time will but cook not behind teams me. Right of two. Eight people in pairs of two will cook behind me. During the live cast, bring your A game. Cook anything you want. Spend 50 bucks, $2,000 on the ingredients. We'll compensate you up to $25. <laughs> We're paying for your ingredients. We're giving you a, the Sam live cast chef jacket. Whoa, you're sending... Okay. Keep, you what? just said you just said that they can go and spend a thousand dollars on ingredients I if did. they want, but I we'll only spend... give them twenty five. Right. I think that the point is you have to make do with twenty five dollars. That means somebody I mean, can go and buy like truffles and bring the them deal. in. And somebody okay, if somebody thinks that truffles are going to influence us, they might influence Long Lin. I don't know that they're going to influence us. I don't know. I don't know about that. I okay, mean, I but think, here's the thing. I think you should, they're going to come think, in here. They're going to come in here with their ingredients. Yes. And they're going to give me. Uh, I don't care. I'm going to give them 25 bucks. Mm -hmm. If they want to give me a grocery receipt list, that's fine. But how do I know what the hell they're using? How do I know that the peanut butter they're going to use? They don't have caviar under the first layer <laughs> that they bought themselves. If they want to lie and cheat about the shit, I don't care. Uh, okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is I'm giving them 25 bucks. Let them bring the fucking Queen of England in here to help influence. Well, that would actually. Work. I was going to yeah, say that, that you would win <laughs> That's if you a brought slam her. Slam dunk. Slam dunk. I would like to meet her. But. All right, let's cook. All right, are you guys ready? We are ready. Okay, go. All right, so I want you to see what we've got, because here's what I've got. Wait for Lynn's camera to get going. Hold mm -hmm. on. Wait for it. Tell me when I'm in frame. There right. you go. Okay, ready? Look what I've got. What you got there? Whoa. <laughs> Gnarly. Okay, these are not small little trucks. They're not. We almost didn't think they'd fit on the egg. Well, I'm still questioning whether or not they're going to fit Where'd on the egg. Where'd you get them? I had to go to Ranch 99. Oh. Store of my people. And let me tell you, Lynn's people, that store, they've made some changes there. It is looking good. How much is a whole trout? Uh, these guys are about eight bucks each or something. Wow. Eight, nine bucks each. Becky is so excited right now. Well, I hope I don't F them up. She's from the Pacific Northwest. But here's this the deal. Is her thing. I want to keep them, I want to keep them fairly dry. Because a wet fish isn't gonna do any good to anybody out there. And um, I want the skin to be crispy on the outside, and if I uh, if they're wet, it's just not going to work. So, all right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get ourselves a little bowl. Pardon me for the noise. And this is, as I said on uh, Facebook and Twitter, this is going to be an herbed up trout. So I'm using a whole bunch of herbs. I've got this basil that I just pulled out of uh, our garden, mm -hmm. our vertical earth garden outside earlier. And this I'm just gonna chop the hell out of. It's gonna be good. Oh. And you know what, I haven't eaten very much today, honestly. I'm super like hungry. I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for this. Some big ass fish. Big Are you cooking fish? one at a time or two at a time? No, dude, I'm gonna cook both of them. Jeez. And, so and how long each side? Or gonna you're be, gonna tell they're us? They're gonna be yeah. They're gonna be maybe five minutes a side. That's gonna be it. So 
all the herbs that I'm using, I just need to chop up, you know, well. Because they're, they're all going inside, inside these fish. Which, by the way, look, when you buy a whole fish like this, they come cleaned. Kelly, don't look. I was going to say, I was just Kelly, don't to look. turn them around. Don't look. So here they are, right? Yeah. This is the guy swimming through the water. <laughs> Oh, that's how they go forward. Like they go like that. They go forward, right? <laughs> but so here they are cleaned. Jeez. Right? Nice. And you don't have to deal with that because the store has done that. Ranch 99 has all manner of fish there. And they'll do anything you want to them. Oh, I should have gotten that picture. Don't show mom the brown gunk. There's no brown gunk. <laughs> White Max. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Kelly is, my wife is what I refer to as a mental eater. She can be put off of a meal because somebody says something about it that she doesn't like to hear. Okay, the basil goes in the bowl. Okay, you think that your yes. fish are big? Yeah. Take a look at John Erickson's brother's trout. All right. Jeez. That looks so photoshopped. Holy smoke. Is no, that that's real? totally real. And 14 pounds, 7 ounces. In North Dakota. That is cool. John, are where are you from? It's so ridiculous. Are you kidding me? And it looks like the same thing. Look, check this out. See, this guy's got that pink stripe down the side. We can put I know there's different kinds of trout. Here, look at me. You got to hold it the same way. No, other way. It's about, it's about I can't the same see what, I Backwards. Can see. You You're have backward. a baby trout, there you go. Yours is a baby compared yeah, to that thing. that's a baby trout. Do you want to see the bigger shot of that one? Yeah. <laughs> that thing is... <laughs> no, that way. Sammy, I only like them big. God, look I at don't that. see. Okay, you know what? When I look at that, that looks fake. That looks photoshopped. So show me where his hands that's are. That's photoshopped. I, he's holding it on the other side, obviously. No, I'm it. starting to think that that's Okay, BS. John, you heard it. They're all calling you out for it being fake. I oh. think it's real. It's not even John, I bet. Right. Remember the lady in the airplane? No, it, John said it's his brother. That pretended she was taking pictures while we were live? Yeah, that was funny. That was fake. I think, I don't see his hands. That's fake. You know, you hear people talking about giant fish all the time, and most of that stuff is shit. I'm not calling, and I'm not saying that that's fake, but... Okay, so this is dill. Now I'm adding dill. You're just spending a whole bunch of time chopping up herbs, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm okay with this. We're only 10 minutes into the cooking segment and all you've done is chop two things. Dill. Dill basil. That smells delicious. Yeah, it does. Okay, now some uh, cilantro and some parsley. Wow. Okay, I'm shortening the process. I got both of them at the same time now. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, John is from San Diego. Yeah. Doesn't mean his brother's not a liar. <laughs> it's he posted a picture of his brother. <laughs> no. I don't think case. that's real. I can't imagine that's real. I was always I was always under the belief that trout were fairly small. Like I thought these guys, at whatever size they are, were actually quite large. The last time I cooked trout, they were like a th two thirds of this, maybe half. Okay. I don't, I don't want all of it. Oh, she's screw it. What the hell? <laughs> Put it in. Okay. Now I need some garlic. Yeah. I need a bunch of garlic here. And I got these cloves ready to go. People are scared of the contest, Sam. Why? That's what I see all the time. What are they? The posting. People just get scared. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I don't understand why the contest would scare people. Who cares? What's the worst thing that happens? They make something. Look, Lynn and I ate dog crap, dog food the other night. That's Lynn true. and I ate dog food. I know. So if Is you can make something better than dog food, you're... I mean, how far do they have to reach to impress us? I didn't see. Was that flat or curly parsley? It was Italian parsley, flat. Okay, thank you. And Mert says, once, it, once that fish is that big, is it not called a sturgeon? Is oh. that true? I don't know. I don't know. Ask Becky. What Mert, do you, okay. ask Becky. Take She'll a look know. at the TV. <laughs> do you think this is a real trout? 
looks pretty real to me. Where's well, the that pink? That looks kind of legit, actually. <laughs> what kind of trout is that? What does it say? Is that a trout? Um, he's going to know. Hands down. You know down. what? I'm sure trout get that big. I just don't believe that photo that we saw. That photo just did not look real to me. And as you come back on, Max? I just said, don't know what the motivation is for li to lie about that. Oh, it's just fun. <laughs> it's the internet. Which is fine. Right. Okay, garlic here. I need a little salt and pepper in this. And um, I want, I, when I've done this before, I've done this with oil. Except here's how was my thought process went like this today. I like oil and I think it's good. But what I think would be more fun and would really sort of baste itself in there would be butter. So I'm going to do this with a little butter tonight. I'm going to do oil on the outside. Yes, Max, I hear you huffing. <laughs> You're about to question no. something. No, no, no. Oh, it's my timing. She's going to say, it? still just preparing this. Nothing on the grill yet. <laughs> Wait, well, why do you... This goes pretty quick, though, right, after it gets on the grill? Yeah, you know, it's. Oh, I just said five minutes aside. Okay, I can see what I need. I am going to need a little oil just to get this... I think I found my soulmate, Sam. Who? Diane. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> All right. Says, what am I? Thank you. Actually, I feel really good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> she stood up for me. She goes, That's okay, Kelly. I can't eat anything that looks too much like what it was when it was alive. And I think that's what I've been trying to articulate all these years, 30 years. Okay, here we are. Thank you. I'm going to get on to the cooking part now. <laughs> So you're just throwing all that so on top. So I'm taking this oh. and I'm putting it inside of this guy right oh. here. Oh. Right? I see. That's the best. Like this is what we want to do. Because when this thing gets hot, all on the inside, right? Can this you uh, move too? the bowl, please? Thank yep. you. Don't look, Cal. <laughs> Don't look, Cal. Okay, so this Don't is going look. here. Wow. <laughs> You should smell it from here. The smell is amazing. Yeah, it looks very nice. And all the way up into the... Kelly, shut your ears. No, it does smell good. All the way up into the head. Ah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> into the gunk. <laughs> there's no gunk. Oh, okay. there's gunk. But I don't want to put this on the outside. So the outside is going to get this. Oh, pepper's here and olive oil is here. A little crispy on the outside. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, wow. That's You're hot. rubbing that thing and calling it sweetheart. <laughs> Pepper on the outside is going to help this guy get a little nice and crispy. <laughs> this guy went from sweetheart to guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. I'll call them when I call them. I think what you said when I asked if there was going to be any kitchen preparation, yes. you went, oh, barely any, couple minutes. I think I said five minutes. How long have I been in here? Like 20. Oh, really? Well, yes. Do that. I've been talking. <laughs> okay, the here we go. slowest prep outside. I've ever seen. Hey, give me a break. You know what? It's <laughs> grilling week. And I owe it to the people, or as mom would say, the peoples. You owe it to, to do this the right way. You owe it to Jonah Goodlow. Welcome that you're, you're late, but you're here. That's what matters. Thank you, Jonah. Okay, ready to throw these guys. Look at how beautiful they are. Mm -hmm. Lynn? Yep. Oh. Can I do that for you right there? Oh, sure. Oh, perfect. Look at those guys. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Hey, Kel. Yep. You can turn off the air if you want. It's lovely out. Wow. Oh, my gosh, Lucky. These are literally are almost too big for this thing. Can you see there, Lynn? Can you guys see? Yeah, we can see. Can you see down here? Not Nobody quite yet. We're getting the shots together. Okay, Lynn, on. Yeah, Lynn's going to well, pop the in there to camera The most important one right now is this one. Yeah, Lynn's going to go over there. So tell me when you're there, Lynn, and I'll throw them on. Yeah. Okay, we're good. Go ahead. Okay, here we go. This guy. Just make sure here. you stay open. So yeah, perfect. Wow. Listen to that sizzle. Wow, is right. Oh, this is this guy's. It's a big one. Oh, that was I'm willing to bet that in ten minutes. Yeah. Dad throws a spaz that the house is too hot. And remember, <laughs> everybody was a witness. He told me to turn the air off. <laughs> A hissy okay, fit. So here we are. Uh, Walk <laughs> us through. What are you doing? So I want the temperature. I want the temperature up around 400 or something. And for anybody that wasn't here yesterday, explain how you adjust the top thing to adjust the temperature. Right. So if you see this, uh, hey, Lynn, will you just pass me that towel over there? 
that black towel. So the beautiful part of the green egg is, is, is there's a couple things. One of them is that it holds the temperature and it keeps it in really well because the walls are super thick. Mm -hmm. Like this is a really heavy lid when I lift it up. But the other thing is between adjusting right down here, uh, the bottom thing that allows the air to come up and adjusting the top that allows the air to come out, you can really dial in the temperature that you want. So right now it's just a, almost 400, but I want a little bit more. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit more. More air is gonna help stoke the flames. The fire's gonna go up, the temperature's gonna go up. And how long are we putting it in there? I think we're gonna go about five minutes aside. What, what time is it right now? I don't really know. It's uh, 6.50. 6.50, okay. Five minutes from now, we're gonna do that. Yes, it's climbing back up again. It's almost at 400. And it's cool because it's like, I mean, the beautiful part of the egg is how thick these things are. Um, if you wanted to go buy yourself an egg and you lived in San Diego or Costa Mesa or Rancho Mirage, you could go to Fixtures Living who sell the original green egg. And don't be confused by imitators that are out there because there are some imitators. Fixtureslivingcom Fixtures Living on Facebook. They've been... Uh, kind to us they've been a sponsor of ours since way back mm -hmm. and they are the place to go for kitchen bath and outdoor and clearly this comes into the outdoor category i have not always been a big fan of cooking on lump charcoal i was a gas grill guy and fixtures living sells a huge stupid array of grass of grass, grass. of gas grills a ridiculous selection but if you don't want that if you want to cook on charcoal, they have answers for that, and this is one of them. You only need to go check them out at fixtureslivingcom or in San Diego off of Dowdy Street. And uh, in the Miramar area, right by the pyramid, uh-oh, now the smoke's starting to come in. So we gotta do this. Uh-oh. I gotta ditch myself. Come on, Lucky. Come on, little boy. Come on. I gotta shut the door. Come on, chop, 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 chop. Now I'm worried it's gonna get too hot. <laughs> There we go. Oh, he's going to get hot. Okay, cool. I can sit down for a minute because I have, uh, I have uh, something I can, a picture I can show you. Oh, no cameras anymore on me. Yeah, we're getting there. That's weird. It's weird to sit down and not uh, see, my, see me looking at myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about what, we're, uh, what next week is. And I like the fact that we've done, uh, we had like grilling week. Hey, grab your mic. God. I like the fact that we had grilling week. How do you feel about this for next week? Three ingredient week. Oh. What do you think? Everything I make has three ingredients in it. Or yeah. Wait. Only Vodka, oh. cranberry, and a lemon. <laughs> would qualify as something on three ingredient week. Hold on. Okay, the egg is going kind of gnarly right now. I was going to say, now. I think she's going to blow, Sam. What do you mean? It's just she's gonna getting blow. pretty Look intense. At her. What's important out here is the temperature. <laughs> and the temperature is, it's only like four and a quarter. We're going to be fine. But here's my new vodka, Kel. Yeah. Uh, half vodka, half water. Yeah. And then the splash of cran. That's what I like. Okay. So three ingredient week or four ingredient week. Do we like that as an idea? I love that. Okay. And I was hearing a call the other night for salad week. Yeah, a lot of people. People want salad week? A lot of people wanted salad week. I even got recipes for salad week. Sorry. Oh. Sam. Uh, that's cool. Week. We could do some. We could actually do some viewer recipes too. But maybe viewer recipe week is a different week by itself. And we don't have to do things in weeks. I just like the idea that, you know, this, you can call it something and it all sort of stays together. And that, in my mind, that kind of makes sense. Salad week. So next week, three ingredient week. We good? So yeah. I love it. Okay. Diane week. Hind actually asked if salt and pepper was included. And I said, no, that was a freebie. Salt and pepper, yes. And olive oil is always a freebie. Yeah. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna talk about what really you can use, I think you have to say um, a lubricant like butter or olive or olive oil or sesame oil is a freebie, 
Salt and pepper is a freebie. Is there anything else, Lynn? Um, no, actually. Well, yeah, no. I, I mean, I would say sort of generic pantry items. You know, like what about what about uh, like what about pepper? Or I mean, like like, like cumin. chili pepper. Yeah, chili powder. Would you call those things pantry items and they're not included? No, not no. at all. Seasoning is fair game. All of that is fine. So okay. We can do like a 17 herbs and spices. So, but you know, that's not my cooking style anyway, so I, pro I wouldn't do that. Okay. By the way, I haven't shaved for four, I think it's four I days. Wow, know. you never do that. Why? I don't know. When I came in and gave you a kiss, I'm like, wow, you didn't shave. Again. I, and I, I, at the beginning of the show, I noticed I was doing this. I just like the feel of it. <laughs> Really? Because like, I can't really grow facial hair all that well. It's like, oh, so every like so often I like... Asian. And I have to shoot... I look <laughs> Asian? No. It's oh, I can't grow facial hair. That's like Asian. Uh, right. Uh, and Sunday I have to shoot, so I'm going to have to shave. If I didn't have to shoot Sunday, I think I would let it go. I had a beard once, and honestly, I looked like a convict. It was awful. Oh, I apologize we show for any old pictures of you. <laughs> I apologize for anybody that's in prison. That is a convict. That, that looks... Uh, Better than I do with a beard. I'm sure it's most people. I just look terrible with a beard. Partially because I can't really, I can't really, really grow anything. Was it me or did you notice, did you hear sound from the TV that yeah. Greg was watching or his kids <laughs> yeah. were watching? Yeah. Note to self, let's tell him to boot the kids out of the room. I don't know if they were kids, man. What time is it? It's uh, 6.57. Does that mean I, I pretty Whoa. much need Lynn's watch? Oh, stop moving so fast. Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, shit. Flames oh. and crap. <laughs> F. That's a lot of smoke. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's trouble right there, boy. <laughs> Mother effer. These are the shows I love. You know what? I've only ever done this. On a gas grill. If you open up, we step can see. Step to the side, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, step to the side. So what I'm, I have to try. Oh, right, be girl. careful. Oh, jeez. I got too much flame here, guys. Fire trout. Oh, the poor fish. Oh, 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 oh. that was oh. bad. <laughs> Holy crap. I've just decimated this freaking. Oh. Oh, what a shame. I hope oh, they Mr. look bad. Trout. Oh. oh my god. Holy <laughs> shit. Ah. You know, I had questions. I don't know. I just don't know how to Should you have oiled the grates? All I'm no, the fish was oiled. All I'm worrying about now is Lynn's pictures. Oh, I'll make them look good. Don't worry. Don't you worry. I'm so mad. Well, they're almost done. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I could probably get a piece right out of Shit. We shouldn't take a piece right out of here like that. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Perfect. Very nice. You know nice. what? It's See, really I'll totally eat that. Yeah, hot. I'll eat that too. Ah, it's trout. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that was damn delicious. Wow. You're going to like that. It's all herby. And that was... Mm, Okay, I'm happy with the taste. I've just decimated the damn things. Wow. I did trout for uh, my third cookbook, Just Grill This. And the pictures were great. We didn't end up using it in the book, but I completely, because I could turn the thing down, I had too much heat here. Damn it. So mad. But I do like skin. <laughs> ow, 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 that's hot. God damn it. <laughs> I love my that. husband so much, right now especially. Look at him. Well, you because you know that I. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Fridays uh, on the radio, I'm on uh, Dave Shelling Chainsaw. Uh, DSC on uh, K on uh, KFMB Radio, which is one oh. What is it? Hundred point seven. Hundred point seven. Yes. You know that for sure. Yes, I listen to you on Friday mornings. And by the way, I think Saturday is their two-year anniversary from being back. Uh, oh, that's when awesome. they got booted off of that other station that they were on. And they're back, and it's two-year anniversary. I'm going to take champagne in with me tomorrow morning. Fun. Well, what a mess I have made here, Lynn. <laughs> I cannot believe it's okay. it. 
it'll be fine. I apologize for this. So we're gonna give it like one more minute, and then uh, and then we're gonna pull it off, and then we're gonna we're gonna be very happy with it. Seven o'clock, man. Seven o one. Okay, we're pretty close. So that's what we got. We got next week is uh, three ingredient week. The week after, we're gonna do salad week. Yeah, I like that. Does that sound good? I like yes. that. Yeah, we have a lot of support for salad week for we sure. Do. do we not have support for three ingredient week? No, we definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Do. Okay. All right. Good. Aw, mm -hmm. smile, Sammy. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. Damn it. Nice. Blow that billowing smoke. Mm -hmm. It smells incredible. Oh, it smells great. I just can't. I, there's no way to get this off, Lynn, and have it not. Did be you just not put enough oil, or just a mess? Well, I thought that the dish was. He's gonna be thinking about it all night. Well, that's what I want to tell our viewers. Maybe right. some way they can prevent this. Well, have someone some. said that's open or close the air, the intake at the top. Where's Greg Rampy when you need him? He should be chiming in right now. You know what? Here's the thing. Look at this. The thing is, you don't want it looking like that. You don't want it all coming off and looking like somebody just drove over it. <laughs> oh. yeah. And that's, that's exactly what's going Don on here. Don says, close the dampers. I know. Well, I wanted it to have more heat. Oh, my God. This, is, this one's coming off in like 16 pieces. Holy shit. It's going to be a fun photo. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the... Oh, fucking, ow, ow, Sam. God, did you see that? No, get your face did out. Did you not see the flames that just came up because of the... Sammy, I'm not kidding, get away from it. Just get the damn fish. Now you're making yeah. me mad. Yeah, you got <laughs> what you're talking about. That's a picture. All right, Ew. Lynn, look at that. They're like mutilated fish now. I said it's like somebody drove over. Actually, they look really cool. Well, That's going to make, make a, a great photo. It's you invented something. It's going to make a good something. picture. I invented burned fish. It's charcoal fish. It's Just what? call it charcoal fish and no one will know the difference. Okay, here's the thing. Look. If you want to take a plate and put a little bit of this, a little bit of this uh, herby, buttery, olive oily stuff down, right? And then get some of the fish and put it on top. The smell is unbelievable, I'm telling you. If you could smell it right now, You'd be real happy with what I had done. But now you just take some of this beautiful little gentle fish right here and put a couple pieces of it down like this. Wow. Oh my God, this is going to be so good. It just looks so bad. A little bit right here. Gentle, gentle, gentle. <laughs> we got lots of questions. Right like that. Oh, we do? Yeah. And then you grab, where is it? This one, not this one. <laughs> we had too many we all have olive oils over here. <laughs> this is one. Hey, never too many. The quarantine, right? And a, just a little extra drizzle over the top for some richness. Don't underestimate what a good extra virgin olive oil is going to do on top of something like this. Amen. I use them often for finishing. And that's... Exactly what I just did. So here's the plate, Lynn. Look how pretty that is. It nice. looks beautiful. Right? Dig yeah. It. Nice. And one little bite, or a bunch of little bites. With a little bit of that herbaceous little rubby thing that I did. Oh, Kelly. You're going to die. Does it taste like salmon? Oh my God. Wait, I'm going to give mom a bite. No. Yep, you're not going to have a bite. You won't have a bite. We'll do it after the show. It's okay. No, I wanted to have a... Fuck. I don't like the word trout. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm looking for a, a partner who will be more amenable to the kind of food that I like to eat. We're about to have our 27th anniversary in two days, and Sam is now taking offers. If you think that you have taste buds <laughs> like me and are into eating the kind of food that I will eat, please send your picture to uh, info at thesamlivecast.com and whether you're available and if you're prepared to move to San Diego. <laughs> I'll cook for you a lot. I make coffee every morning. I'm really good at yeah, it. Yeah, but he doesn't shave. I'm doing a slow zoom as you're making I it. Shave, right. I he shave doesn't sometimes. shave. 
All right, I'm telling you, I don't care what this looks like. The pictures are going to be awesome. You have to make this. Don't be scared of cooking a whole fish. Maybe oil your grates a little bit more, a little less heat. That's the key. But don't be scared of a whole fish. Unbelievably delicious. And it was super easy, apart from the fact that I burned a bunch of it. But inside, the meat of the fish itself is absolutely perfect. <laughs> Thank you for being here. We'll see you Monday night. Next week, three ingredient week. I can't wait. Tell your friends about us. Go to weallove.com. Buy something, promo code Sam. Go to Fixtures Living. I'll be there tomorrow here in San Diego, 1230, hanging out, eating, because it's Fixtures Friday. Thanks for being here. See you on Monday.